It's a beautiful day to make a boatload of spätzle today. Um, I was gifted two flats of wonderful organic eggs, so that's what we'll need. And flour, salt, water, a bowl to mix up the dough. It's really that simple. Um, don't be intimidated by the amount I'm making. I'll make small portions so you can see and the recipe for a normal family portion is below. Also, I will make the base recipe with just the flour and the eggs. And then I will make green ones that have spinach in them. And I will make liver spätzle. Yes, it has liver in it. If you don't like liver, I'll put this at the end so you don't have to skip through. But for those who do like liver, you want to try them. They are really, really good. And in a follow-up video, I will show what I make with all these different kinds of spätzle. But in this one, we're just concerned about how to make them. And next, I'll show you the devices needed. So first we need to talk about devices because there's a lot on the market right now. Now originally spätzle were made with a board and a knife. You put the dough on here, hold it over the boiling water and you cut these spätzle things off. Um, I've never done this, but I will try it today in the video. This is cumbersome. There are some people that are really skilled at this and that's really cool. Um, then there's a thing called spätzle hobel. So Oops, sorry, you put this on and this didn't work well. The dough goes in here, this sits over the pot and then it just moves and they come falling out underneath. I use this a lot. This makes a roundish kind of button looking spätzle. And then this is from Switzerland. Sadly, I broke the handle off. You can buy them with a handle, it has the holes in it. And then you just use a spatula, you put it over the pot, you use a spatula and you scrape them out. This worked really well, I'm kind of sad about the handle. I replaced it with this one, it's plastic and pretty big and, you know, it takes up a lot of storage, works too, but the other one was better. This too will make the roundish kind of spätzle. And then there's a spätzle crest. This is much like a potato ricer. Um, you put the dough in and you just press it through and you get the long strand elongated ones. I never owned a potato riser, so I don't know if that would work as a substitute for this. Try it out. In this one, the holes are fairly small and all the other, because you got pressure behind it and all the other devices have bigger holes. These sell online. They are not very expensive because Spätzle have gotten more popular. But you can improvise too. This is one of these vegetable grill crates. This would work, I'm pretty sure. Or, you know, fashion your own one. Like with these Chinese takeout things, they're fairly sturdy. You'll have to drill some holes in it and then just hold it. It's not good, obviously, for big amounts, but it works. And uh, I prefer making big amounts because of the cleanup and they freeze so super well so it's nice to have a stash in the freezer let's get going with the dough okay while i make the dough i already put on a pot of water that needs to come to a really good simmer and i'll make the recipe amount so you put your eggs in there add a little bit of salt this is pretty rough <laughs> sea salt and just a sip of water the recipe below should work, but because flour is different and eggs are different, um, you want to see how I deal with the consistency for this, because it's really more about the right consistency than it is um, exactly what the recipe says. So I just whirl this up so that the eggs are broke, and of course, and then I start adding flour. And of course, you can use your, you know, kitchen machine, whatever makes it easy. I'm just in the habit of making them by hand. It goes just as well. There, and I'll add flour until I get the right amount. All whipped up, and this looks pretty good. It flows nicely because we don't want this too hard or it'll stick to the press and not fall in. This is pretty nice. Maybe I add a little tad of flour, but then we're ready to go as soon as the water boils. The water is almost to a boil. 
send it away. And I think I start out with this homemade version. That's what people can do so well, but not me. We can all do a good laugh. So let's see how that works. I have a feeling the dough would have to be a little thicker for that. So I wetted the board and the knife and I meant it when I said cumbersome. That's what I mean. <laughs> but they do turn out nice, especially for the liver spätzle. They get a little bit bigger, have a little bit more bite to them. So yeah, I think that's enough. Now we wait till they come up. Over here, I have a pan with some melted butter in it. You can put it in a colander to drain them. I like to put them in a little bit of melted butter. It gives them a good taste and it's good to get the liquid out, especially if you freeze them. Can't believe I just did that the old fashioned way. I'm glad I don't have to do this for the rest of my life though. And as soon as they all float on top, they're done. There we go. All floaters. You just take them out, drain them off, and in the pan. The water's good and hot again. And now we'll try the Spätzlehobes, what we call it. It translates into Spätzleplein, like as in planing a board, not as an airplane. And this is pretty easy. This is how they come out. And they go in there to make these little buttons. And they come popping up quickly. And they're beautiful. And they taste so good. So many things you can make with it. I'll show a whole lot of them in the next video. So they, are, they only have to come up to float and then cook there for maybe 30 seconds. And they're ready. We'll take them out. Look here. And put them in the pan over there. And then at the end, we can take a look and compare what the sizes are. There we go. Next one, we'll make the elongated ones. All right, water's good and hot again. We'll put this on so I can fill it. There we go. I'm going to tip it up and out they come. If you give it squirts, you have shorter ones. If you uh, continuously press, you probably have longer ones. Doesn't matter, they're all good. Like, come on, how easy is that? Making the Italian pasta noodles is a whole lot harder. These are so fabulous in noodle soup. With gravy and a roast. And they're done. On the pan they go. Now we'll take a closer look. And next up, I'll be making the cash bits. Oh, not cash bits. No. Next up, I'll be making the spinach. Spe <laughs> I can't even say it. Spinach spätzle. That's hard. <laughs> and look here. These are the ones I made with the board. I have to say, I'm surprised that it's easier than I thought it would be. They're really not all that different from these guys. This is what they look like. They're really good because they soak up gravy so well. And these are the long ones. Beautiful German egg noodle. A Spätzle. So I'm going to swirl them around now um, in the butter mixture. And then put them aside because I have a whole lot more to do. So here's one hint. We made one recipe amount uh, in this water. When it starts looking cloudy and you make a lot more, start a new batch of water. Otherwise, they get kind of slippery, yucky on the outside. 
they don't do well. You want them to come out nice and crisp like a noodle. And the other important hint is this. It's a mess. And what you want to do as soon as you're done, soak everything in cold water. It has to be cold and then just scrub it off and then wash it with soapy regular dish water. Because once this dries on, you're going to need a chisel. Okay, the spinach spätzle. <laughs> so this is, uh, well, it's actually not even spinach. It's lamb's quarter, but it tastes just like spinach when cooked and it grows so much easier for me. This was blanched and frozen, but if you use spinach, you can do it fresh. Um, I put, I just hacked it up so it's kind of nice and thin. And I had to put one egg in here already because it was just not enough. So it would make good work out of it. And then same scenario, the eggs, salt. And for this one, I add a little bit of fresh ground nutmeg. And I'm going to add the flour and make that dough. Let you see what it looks like. So here's the dough for the spinach ones and see, I keep calling this dough. It's really more of a batter. It's not a real dough, but there too, you want it to where it just flows, not too liquid, but thin enough to where it doesn't ball together. Let's put them in the water, see what happens. Okay, here we go. Same scenario. Water is boiling, but you don't want a brutal rolling boil. We'll take this again, put our dough in. These are so good. There's so much you can make with this, aside from just serving them as a side. It's fantastic. Here we go. Look, they come out just like the others. And then we wait on them to float. Now, when you have spinach, like um, cream spinach that's frozen, or when it's really fine, then you get bigger spätzle. My kitchen machine just really didn't do this right, and I have nothing else. I'm not going to take the uh, the meat grinder out for this. But so they're smaller, but really, it's the same taste. That makes no difference. Second load coming out. And it rained overnight. We got a nice amount of rain. So if I find some mushrooms tomorrow, I have to go look. The weather's nice. Then we'll cook these up with the cheese and the cream and the onions. That'll be so good. There, I'll let them cool off. And then they go in the fridge, maybe half of it in the freezer. And now it's time to do the second round of cleanup so all this can go back in operation for the liver spätzle. So liver. Um, I just clean this up to where these stringy parts come out and then the rest goes in the food processor. You can also chop it up by hand really finely. And that's simple as that. Okay, so similar scenario. <laughs> um, eggs chopped liver whether you hand chop this or use a food processor um this is chicken liver but you can use beef or pork as well and then salt and pepper and nutmeg i also put in some parsley the recipe will say to put in onion you have to saute them first and then chop them together i'm not going there everything's already full with cooking scenarios today so I'm not making another pan to um, do some onions because when I make this into a meal, it won't be missing the onion taste, the extra one. So, and this time I'll use the press. Let's see how they come out. Okay, this has been beat together. Make sure you also always beat it good so you don't have um, flour lumps in it. And that's how it is. It holds together, but it also flows. This should be pretty close to perfect. Okay, we'll use this one this time. This goes back. Dough goes in. That was quite a lot. Sorry if that was in front of the camera. I'll turn the heat up some so it won't bog down too much. And here they go.
So they're nice and firm. They're already cooked through and they are about as long as spaghetti. But the next round I'll show you how you can get them the exact length you like them. Another batch in. And now we press and cut and press and cut. They taste so good. If you go heavy on the parsley, it's really wonderful with this. It's not a strong liver taste. It's more of a faint liver taste, but it's really delicious. My favorite way of eating them is in soup, Lebelspätzle suppe, or in a frying pan with an egg cracked over and a nice salad on the side. Yum. So you made Spätzle. Now what? Well, you can immediately turn them into a dish, like I'm going to do here. Oh, put them in the container and refrigerate or freeze. If you freeze them flat, you get some water boiling. And while it's boiling, this time a rolling boil, you put the frozen spätzle in there. And once they float up, they fall apart and float up. They're ready to serve. They come out like fresh. This is also how can you, you can heat up the refrigerated ones, but you can nuke them, bake them. It just depends what you're going to turn it into. And stay tuned in the next video. I'll turn you, tell you what wonderful things you can turn Spätzle into, especially the green ones. Thanks for watching.